Hello, I am Yen Lu and I'm a lawyer at the IMF. Hi, I'm Jeremy Zettelmeyer and I'm an economist at the IMF. In order to fight COVID-19 and support those hit by the crisis, governments around the world have borrowed large amounts of money. As a result, debt levels are at historic highs. This mounting government debt or sovereign debt brings up an interesting question. What happens when a country can't pay what it owes? When a country is no longer able to service its debt, there are two possibilities. In some cases, the government can solve the problem by undertaking economic reforms and fiscal adjustment, while asking the IMF for a loan to cover its deficit in the meantime. This works when the debt problem is limited or temporary. In other cases, when the needed adjustment to solve the debt problem is just not economically or politically feasible, we say that the country's debt is unsustainable. The debtor government then needs to approach its creditors and ask them to renegotiate the terms of their payments, a process called sovereign debt restructuring. What is the IMF's role in this? First, let's look at what the IMF can't do. Only the debtor government itself can decide on a debt restructuring. The IMF is not involved in the debt restructuring decision or the negotiation with creditors. Restructuring talks are very complicated. So what the IMF can do is to give the parties a place to start talks and help them overcome five of the biggest challenges to debt restructuring. Challenge one, procrastination. Restructuring is painful for both the debtor and its creditors. Governments often hesitate to announce that they want to renegotiate their debt because they don't want to scare off future lenders. But economic problems only get worse the longer countries wait to address them. At some point, the country will have difficulties obtaining new market finance. In such a situation, countries typically turn to the IMF for a loan. But the IMF can only lend to countries that have sustainable debt or that are taking credible steps to renegotiate their debts with their creditors. This incentivizes the debt government to start the process of restructuring sooner rather than later. The second challenge is a country's lack of financing. When a country is renegotiating its debt, it typically has no access to financing from private lenders, but it needs financing to prevent disruptive cuts in government expenditures or sharp rise in taxes. To help, the IMF can extend a loan to the government. Again, the IMF can only lend to countries addressing their debt problems. The third challenge is something called asymmetric information. If only the debtor knows how much it owes to all creditors and how much of its debt it can afford to pay back, this can create distrust with creditors. To prevent talks from becoming a poker game, the IMF helps by laying the cards on the table from the start. It carries out a thorough evaluation of the country's debt situation and the extent to which realistic policy reforms might restore the country's ability to pay its debts. This leads to an estimate of the minimum debt relief that the country needs, which serves as a benchmark for negotiations. The fourth challenge, a lack of commitment. For a country to receive debt relief, it's important that it commits to addressing the policies that led to a buildup of unsustainable debt in the first place, even after they get relief. That is why IMF lending is set up to hold the debtor to its promises. The IMF structures its loan so that it's not a lump sum upfront. Financing is paid out in trenches over time, only when the government meets specific reform milestones. The fifth challenge comes from a lack of coordination among private and sometimes public sector creditors. A government will have various creditors pursuing their own strategies in debt talks. So what happens if some of those creditors refuse a deal the others want to accept? Here, the IMF helps in two ways. First, when a country is renegotiating its debts, the IMF will only lend to it if its renegotiation strategy is designed in a way 
that is likely to lead to high creditor participation. This requires careful creditor coordination. Second, the rules for when the IMF can lend require the country to negotiate in good faith with the creditors it fails to pay. And as long as the country does it, creditors cannot block an IMF loan. This creates an incentive to strike a deal with the debtor. In addition, the IMF promotes the use of clauses in a debt contract that helps prevent a minority of creditors from blocking a debt restructuring. Together, these policies create incentives for all parties to cooperate. Even with the IMF working to facilitate a sovereign debt restructuring, it can be a time-consuming, highly complex process. But at least the IMF can give the two sides a place to start and incentives to find a solution.